Do autoimmune diseases run in the family? The answer is yes, they do. But they show up as different symptoms and different conditions and often uh, remain hidden for years. Uh, what brought this to my mind is uh, just like last week I was following up with a patient of mine, uh, Karen, and uh, she has been tested positive for Hashimoto's. Uh, also, they think she might have lupus and uh, a couple of other things. And her dad was just diagnosed with Graves, which is a hyperthyroid autoimmune disease. And she has a younger brother that's had unexplained joint pain for a year. That is a really good example of how autoimmunity can show up in different family members uh, with different symptoms. Um, I remember another family a couple years ago uh, brought their uh, young child in, I believe. Yeah, the, young, the young girl was a two-year-old, and she was diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Now... The interesting thing is, when you start digging into their history, uh, they've got another little boy who's had a GI complaints so bad he's been to the ER. He's five. He's been to the ER like four times in five years. He's also got uh, some ADHD-type symptoms. And they have another child that's got chronic, severe uh, allergies. It's got you know different types of eczema and urticaria and things like that. And that's what you'll find is these autoimmune diseases show up in a lot of different ways. Uh, I remember Karen had originally presented because of some low thyroid symptoms. And, you know, we, one of part of the workup we do is to find out if she's got Hashimoto's because it's the most common cause of uh, autoimmune disease. And, of course, we asked them about their family history. And she didn't know there had been no diagnosis, right, no name given. But here it is uh, nine months, I think it's about nine, ten months later after originally working with her doing a follow-up visit. We find out, hey, guess what? Dad's just been diagnosed with Graves. And all this time, her brother's been fighting off these joint pains that look like rheumatoid arthritis, but he's like uh, 22, 23 years old. That is how autoimmune diseases uh, present. They often uh, don't, they don't have, it's not like everybody in the family have the same thing. Uh, autoimmune disease, especially autoimmune thyroid disease, can sometimes skip generations or very often. I can't tell you how many times I hear this. You hear things like, <clears throat> you know, my mother and my sister both have had their thyroid glands taken out. Well, they probably had Hashimoto's, <laughs> that's probably what it was. Um, I'm not talking about thyroid cancer. Or I'll say, you know, my mom's been on Synthroid for 30 years, my sister just got put on Synthroid, they probably have Hashimoto's, because it is the most common, the most common cause of low thyroid. Uh, in fairness, there are some other causes that people do have that I do see, but there's, I mean, nine to one, nine to one you see Hashimoto's over anything else. And the reason I wanted to tell you that these things cluster in families is that if you're suffering any type of low thyroid symptom, any type, be it constipation, hair loss, depression, weight gain, uh, low libido, infertility, and you have any first degree relative with any thyroid hormone problem that's been diagnosed, be it Hashimoto's, or even if they're just taking thyroid hormones, good chance you've got Hashimoto's and you got to find someone that can work you up for that and uh, help, you, help you deal with it, whether you want to deal with the medication route, which is just giving you thyroid hormone replacement. <clears throat> it does very, very little, if anything at all, for the actual autoimmune disease, and therefore it continues to rage and cause more problems and attack more tissues. Or you can try to use a, a different model, which is you try to manage this autoimmune thing, try to calm it down and slow it down, spray liquid, you know, spray, uh, liquid nitrogen on it, and slow the thing down. Because these things that I'm talking about are all really genetic conditions. Uh, it's not like a virus that you catch and it goes away, um, although viruses can be triggers. These are genetic conditions, and what happens is these genes get expressed, and they start doing their thing, and what their thing is is causing attack and destruction of your tissues by your immune system. And you can't turn this thing off. You can't just you know flip a switch and it's off, or you can't take some miracle supplement and it goes off. But what you can do, though, is slow them down. Uh, I just mentioned ago, one of the analogies I'm using now is say, you know, we're going to spray this thing with liquid nitrogen and just slow it way the heck down so that it causes you <clears throat> little to no symptoms. But you can't cure it. That, that's, that's a, it's, a, it's false to say that. And so if you have anybody in your family with any autoimmune disease and you've got some kind of goofy symptom that no one can figure out, be it chronic joint pain or chronic headaches or chronic dizziness or whatever it is, you probably have an autoimmune condition. And if it's thyroid symptoms, it's probably Hashimoto's. Um, if it's, that's one of the, the clearest ones. Now, frankly, you could have multiple tissues that are being attacked because really, really, all those autoimmune diseases I just named, multiple sclerosis, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's, rheumatoid, all of the lupus, all of those things are really the same thing. 
The body has lost its tolerance to itself. It's attacking itself. It's killing itself. They just get different names based on what tissue is being attacked. So remember, these things, they do run in families.